Kinder. Das war ein langer Krieg. What's good guys, Grand Comics here from Eastern Slovenia, finally escaped my panda prison and I'm here to talk about Klaus. <coughs> hey everybody, this is the Hydra Hut and uh, let's talk about chapter 2 of Klaus now. So, uh, again, this is uh, Klaus by Dan Mora and Grant Morrison. Um, last time we talked about Chapter 1, now let's cover Chapter 2. So we're back in town, and we have some guards sitting here, uh, basically just talking about how crazy what happened last was. And they, um, they're going on about the wolves and the howling and how mystical everything is. And then we see somebody starting to make a snowball. I wonder what could be happening here change over to the next page and we get this really cool setup where they take just a big single picture and then they divide it up into multiple panels with different sized snowballs throughout so it looks like multiple scenes as we can see the uh, snowball arcs through lands on the roof starts increasing its size as it goes down the roof We're back to these guys and they start to notice something in the distance which is uh, our boy Santa scaling the wall with his bag of toys Look at this determination on Santa's face. He's got a mission, and he's going to complete it. So as Santa crests the wall, the guards notice him, and they're just about to sound the alarm when this now giant snowball comes crashing down and takes him out. And Santa drops heroically from the, roo uh, from the wall. We get another shot of our evil Baron. His picture's everywhere in this town. And look at this. Isn't that cool? It's a great shot of Klaus. He's even got a present in his hand. He's both badass and kind. <clears throat> and then you can see here he's walking through town and there's a little gift outside this door. Uh, as he's sneaking along, there's more guards. They're talking about the two that just got taken out by the snowball. And they're kind of tripped out by it. They don't know what happened. They, this every, whole town's kind of on edge with mysticism right now. So as they start to go into the darkness to look for him, we see Santa drop down like a ninja, take out a guard and disappear into the darkness again. And the guards come up, find him, pass out against a wall. <laughs> the uh, graffiti over the portrait of the emperor and a toy bag across the guard. Uh, they start locking down the gates, and then we jump back into town as people are finally starting to wake up. And this guy here is going to be appearing throughout the entirety of this um, book. His name is Guntar. Uh, we're in his house right now. His wife's waking him up. He's kind of a little upset because he has to go to the mines and he wants as much sleep as he can. And he walks in and he sees his adorable freaking kids playing with their new toys. And uh, I want everybody to see this right here. This is uh, the little toaster, a la One Punch Man, I think. Anyway, after the shock of all the toys showing up, the parents realize that they're going to get in a lot of trouble for this. And they start rounding them up from the kids, but the little boy's like, look, they fly! And throws this little bird in the air, it goes outside, the dad starts running out to chase it so nobody sees it, and then sees that everybody has toys. And they're all just waking up early in the morning. Uh, we go through town and we see two guards trying to quickly clean up this poster so that the king doesn't see it. But Heans, right here in the background, his crazy evil eyes. He smacks the guards, telling them to knock that off because they're destroying evidence of a crime that was committed. Starts lecturing them when that flying toy comes by in front of one of the guards. King snatches it out of the air quickly, demands an explanation. And then that's when we pan to the town and all of the kids are outside playing with their toys. Ecstatic, happy, like kids should be. And we get a shot of the king yelling at the guards, demanding to know what's wrong. And then we see the queen and his son Jonas outside. And uh, Jonas is noticing how happy all the kids are and that does not make him pleased.
So as we're back in town, the guards start collecting the toys from everybody. Uh, the emperor <laughs> gets yelled at by one of the citizens, and he proceeds to lecture her about trying to take happiness away from his poor sick son <laughs> and how kind they all are for donating these to presents to him. Uh, he's just being a right douche, basically. <clears throat> then we get a nice establishing shot of the castle. Um, this is actually pretty cool. I don't know if this is on purpose, but it actually looks like a wolf head in the snow of this bank. But anyway, uh, the guards have taken all the toys, and we see Jonas, the little boy, looking out. Uh, very, very greedy expression on his face as he sees the toys coming his way. Quick shot to back to the father in the village. The lady who confronted him is now being hauled off, we can assume, to prison. Uh, and as he's lecturing the town about building these toys and, and basically accusing them of having a, um, a person in their midst who doesn't take the holiday spirit seriously, this little girl confronts him. I think you might recognize her from earlier. And she tells him that it was the Juleness, the Yuletime spirit, and the emperor says, there's no such thing. And then proceeds to leave the little girl. Look how cute she is. This guy's a great artist. Back at the castle, the kids playing, or Jonas is trying to play with all the toys, but none of the magic works, and he's freaking out that none of the toys work for him. He hurls this little bird across the room, and it shatters, and the mother sees it, picks it up, and seems to recognize it. As the boy's still throwing his massive tantrum over none of the toys working the way they're supposed to, we see the mom run away to her room and pull out a box that is probably hidden away somewhere, and inside is a matching bird. She says, Klaus? So here we see that the mother of Jonas, the wife of the king, has some history with Santa. <clears throat> and we go back to the castle where they're gathering up a crew to hunt down Santa Claus. And that's where we meet the Grey Hulk, Olav. <clears throat> no one can hide from Olav. Olav will find the man. Olav will eat him alive. Olav is me, obviously. Anyway, Olav's a real charming guy. Uh, and he's here to help hunt down Santa Claus. And pretty much as soon as the they get started in their search, Santa shows up. And starts handing out a fistful of festivities. We get a nice little fight scene. Um, Olaf really doesn't stand as big a... Not as big of a challenge as you would think for his size, but that's probably just because Santa doesn't fuck around. After he, <laughs> he beats the Grey Hulk, he decides to have a little bit of fun with his unconscious body. And when the guards come back to find him, Olaf is now a snowman. Which is probably a reference to um, Frozen, I would assume. They make a lot of references in these books. But they're kind of sly, so they don't really stick out and slap you in the face, which is nice. Uh, the king is absolutely enraged that Olaf got beaten. So they, um, they find the sack of Santa's and call for the dogs, which... Look at these dogs. Those are some rabies infested <laughs> beasts uh, <clears throat> here's another really nice shot where they use the darkness of the hood to really illustrate how pissed off and aggressive this emperor is anyway as the uh, the book as this book ends we see Santa leaving the building he wishes the town a Merry Christmas as the dogs are coming for him. And that's the end of the book.